it often seems that when faced with, with problems so large, that only large actors, corporations or governments, can actually make an appreciable dent or impact. But I would argue it the other way around. I would suggest that in the face of outcomes that are created by the aggregation of individual behaviors and decisions, it's really those individuals as consumers, as citizens, as parents, as people, as neighbors, as friends, who can actually make the most difference. But that requires each and every one of us to begin to think a little more clearly about the water we're consuming directly, that 150 liters per person per day I spoke about earlier, and also indirectly through embodied or virtual water. The first step, obviously, is to try and swat up. Do you know how much water you use? If you go on the, the internet, you'll find lots of tools easily available through the quickest Google search that will help you calculate your own water footprint. My research group has developed one which is easily available if you Google the Bristol Group for Water Research. There on our water use cal uh, calculator, you're able to enter your own behaviors in terms of numbers of showers per week. Um, do you own a garden that you water regularly? Uh, do, you, do you have a swimming pool? The answer for most of us is no, uh, but for some it's yes. Uh, those sorts of behaviors aggregate and we crunch the numbers for you and let you know what your per day water use is. You can then go back and say, well, what happens if I don't water the garden quite so often? What happens if I perhaps don't wash the car so often? So information is important. Similarly, with respect to embodied water, um, it's incumbent on consumers to begin to add water to their mental calculations when they're standing in the supermarket wondering whether they should buy the Kenyan fine beans or the local dwarf beans. For me, the answer depends on the season. I like having beans available year-round, uh, but it's about making a, a, a knowledgeable choice and about knowing that sometimes you make choices that incur a water debt to other parts of the planet. And you must then try to think a little bit about how to redress that debt. Governments are not the best actors uh, in this context, in my view, because I think if you think about it historically, governments rarely lead. They generally follow, but only once the direction of travel is firmly established. And governments follow in one of two ways. They either release another manifesto saying, hey, everybody, what you're doing is what we've always believed in, and here in England, we've seen plenty of that lately. Or they, they catch up by being replaced. And again, that, that process of replacement is about voter behavior. It's about individuals, once again. I would also reject the view that corporations or market forces should be allowed to take the lead, really, because market forces are part of the problem. Uh, and perhaps the clearest example I can give of that is the phenomenal rise and rise and rise of the international bottled water trade. Bottled water in little more than a generation has gone from being a fringe product to being a global ubiquity. And in many institutions, even in water-rich countries, relatively water-rich countries like England and Wales, even in those countries, there are places you can go to where the only available water supplies are bottled water supplies. Universities, uh, for example. A number of my students have been doing research in recent years on the availability of public water on Britain's university campuses. And what they've discovered, as others elsewhere have discovered, is that most universities are water deserts. And the only way to slake your thirst in these water deserts is to go and buy expensive bottled water. Some of these universities even have proprietary exclusionary arrangements with bottled water companies. So that's just one example that leads me to think that market forces uh, and the corporate sector are not going to lead us out of our overly water consumptive habits towards a more water sustainable future.